More and more in, the, in today's day and age, m the mobility story is a huge piece of, of any solution that you're gonna design. And that is absolutely 100% true with Dynamics 365. You need to not only understand how is this application gonna function when I'm using it traditionally through the, uh, the web application or through the Outlook client or even Interactive Service Hub, but you wanna understand what that mobility story looks like when you're accessing it through like a tablet application or a phone application. Now with the mantra that Dynamics 365 has this whole build once deploy everywhere uh, strategy there really isn't a lot of considerations that you have to look at when you start talking about mobility strategies but there are a few little things that if you just plan for them ahead of time is going to make sure that deploying that information out to the mobile client is a much more effective strategy so in this module what we want to look at is is what are those different considerations so what are the things that are going to be different when you deploy it out to the mo uh, to the mobile application how are the forms going to be presented just a little bit differently? How do you make sure that the entities are actually enabled for the mobile experience? We're going to talk a little bit about just some of the different customization strategies in regards to navigation, views, forms, making sure that when this is actually pushed out, how are those items going to look and be worked with? And then talk about mobile specific functionality such as things like custom controls and just presenting that information throughout the application. Why do we want to look at customizing for mobile and why, why is that different? I mean, realistically, the, the forms are the same and, and the presentation you know, at its core level is going to be the same. But if you think about it, different form factors do different things well. Um, you know, different versions of that application are going to function better on a tablet or a mobile based upon what those people are doing. And nowadays with all your different, you know, service technicians that are going out and doing things mobily or even your sales organizations doing things mobily, people are more often touching either their phone or a tablet. And so one of the things that you always want to consider is if we're going to deploy the mobile application, how do they need to navigate through there that's going to be able to work? And probably the first and foremost thing at the cornerstone of this is before you can do anything, you have to make sure that whatever entities you want to be enabled or whatever entities you want to work with have been enabled for mobile from a functionality standpoint. So that's the first thing that we're going to show you is just what that process looks like. I want to take this loan application and I want to make it available on the mobile app. So the way I'm going to do that is just by going into the entity definition for the loan application and then down towards the bottom there's going to be kind of a mobile option. So if I scroll down here, I will see kind of my Outlook and mobile. And so what I basically want to do here is I want to enable it for mobile. Now I can define when I'm enabling it for mobile if I want the data to be presented to be read only or how I want that to be presented. But if I don't enable the application for mobile, I'm not going to be able to go ahead and do a whole lot with it. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save and enable it for mobile. And that's going to do a couple of different things. Obviously, it's now going to make it available inside the mobile application application when I'm working through it. But if you also, if you remember when we were talking about the form customization process a little bit earlier, this is also going to give me the capabilities to preview this from a mobile application standpoint inside my form preview. So this is going to give me all of the functionality that I would need from a mobility perspective. When you start customizing or designing forms, the good news is you don't really have to spend a lot of time saying, okay, how am I going to customize the tablet form or how am I going to customize the, the phone form? Because you're really still going to use the main entity form in the application. What's going to happen is when it's rendered on the mobile device, it's actually going to be converted into a series of panels. And those panels are going to display differently based upon the form factor. So you'll see them just a little bit differently on the tablet application as they would the phone application. Now, from that perspective, Perspective, you don't necessarily have to worry about how am I going to customize this for the tablet or how am I going to customize this for the phone, but what you should consider is is it going to look different as it is presented on the tablet or the phone versus the traditional web application? And so that's one of the first things that we want to talk just a little bit about. And probably the easiest way to show you this is just kind of through this screen here. So what I have is kind of the typical C, uh, Dynamics 365 form that you would work with. 
Over on the left hand side we have the web version of that form that has my typical navigation element that's running across the top and then in addition to that it's going to have like my headers, my process control or my, my business process flow and then it's going to have the individual tabs and sections and you'll see that each one of these are kind of correlated with a specific number. Now when we start talking about how that translates into the tablet and the phone application you can see that it's a very different rendering in regards to those, those items. The process control information is going to be more towards the, 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 the top of the application and then you're going to have your related items are going to be correlated with kind of what's called the communication card. So you're going to see tiles that will represent each individual related entity that you're working with. And then from there it just kind of breaks the information down. You'll see your header information, then you'll see your fields, then if we go into like your process control fields you'll see all the fields specific to your business process flows, then you'll get into your individual uh, sections so I can see here where I have like my notes and social pane that's actually been broken down into two specific columns that are being rendered inside the tablet application. That's what you're seeing in regards to number six. And then my additional subgrids and all co columns will additionally kind of display from there. It's the same type of principle on the phone application. It's a little bit different on the phone application in the fact that the headers are usually right above the communication card, but in respect to the rest of the stuff, the process bar is a little more at the top, but the concept is very similar. So this is gonna give you a good idea on how this form might translate over into that mobility story. So again, here's what you would see kind of from that same form from a tablet perspective. This is showing you all the different tabs and the sections within those tabs tabs, each of those broken out into more of a specific column. Obviously you'll have a wider viewing area inside the tablet so you'll be able to see those a little bit more effectively in there. And then also you'll see that information from the form or the phone application itself. And this is where you'll be able to see subsequent information inside there that you can work with, particularly around items like your activity panes. The big thing to remember here is each one of these columns on the phone application is going to represent one screen or one swipe when you're moving through. So you do want to take that into consideration as you're working through and, and designing these elements on your forms. One of the biggest factors that's going to affect how you customize forms specifically that are going to be used in the, the mobile application is just some of the baseline limitations that they have. So for example, you know, if you create a form and that form has six tabs on it and those tabs are using, you know, different items and different references when you're working through it, those only the first five tabs on a form are actually going to transfer over into the mobile application or set the first 75 fields and 10 lists. So it's kind of a combination of if you have four tabs, you're only gonna see the first 75 fields and 10 lists. If you have six tabs, um, you're only gonna see the first five tabs. Even if you have 60 fields on that form, you're only gonna see the first five tabs. So one of the things that you always have to look at is how am I gonna position that information on the form to make sure that when it is rendered into the mobile application, that data that I truly need to be displayed is gonna be there front and center within the application. Now things to remember is, you know, even though I collapse a tab or even hiding a tab on that situation, it still counts towards my limit. So even though it might not be visible on the actual form itself, it's still counting towards that five tab limit. So if I hid all the fields in tab five, I'm not gonna necessarily see tab six because tab six is still technically the sixth tab in that setting. So you do wanna make sure when you're laying these out that the information that's going to be kind of front and center will actually be there and work with. Now the exception to that a little bit is the actual phone application. There is an option when you're going in and customizing these these items on a form, there is an option to hide it or make it not available on the, on the phone application. This would be for tabs, sections, form fields, as well as subgrids on the form. If you don't want them to count towards your limit, you do actually have the capabilities when you're designing the form to, to make it not count towards your limit just by unchecking that available on phone. Still counts towards your limit on the tablet, but not necessarily on the phone application. Now the other thing to remember is we talked a little bit about role-based forms when we were talking about form customizations. 
the tablet and the phone clients do support the concept of multiple forms. However, they don't have a mechanism or a way to change those forms. So for example, if I had a form that was specific to salespeople and I had a form that was specific to service people, I could use security roles and push out the service form to the service people and push out the sales form to the salespeople. But once it loads on the mobile application, that's the form that they're going to use. So there isn't a mechanism to be able to change them inside the form. So you can use multiple forms and different users can see different versions of the form. But once that form has loaded for that user, they will not be able to switch that form to a different form. And that's usually not a big issue when you start talking about it from a mobile standpoint but it is absolutely something that you want to keep in mind. So what we usually kind of tell people when you're, when you're working through this and, and kind of going through is just keep in mind what form factor they're looking at and working with it. Make sure that as you're building these forms, try to tailor them as much as possible for mobile users by putting some of the information that needs to be on those mobile applications front and center. You could always have kind of a secondary version of a form that would be used within the web client that people could navigate to. The other thing to remember is when you're working with the phone application, there isn't an option to open in browser. On the tablet application, there's some functionality like Yammer feeds and some things that wouldn't necessarily transfer over into the mobile experience. But if you're using that on like a Surface or, or even like an iPad or an Android device, you can open that in browser on the tablet application and basically get the web client version of that app. And now you would be able to have some of those things that wouldn't necessarily be presented on the tablet tablet application. And then the other thing that you want to keep in mind as well is on the phone application, typically you're not going to get a whole lot of users who are going to swipe past the fifth panel too often. So again, it kind of comes back to that making sure that the information that's going to be relevant to those people are kind of front and center on the form that you're pushing out from a mobility standpoint. And then the other things is there is no concept of hiding tabs or sections or anything like that on mobile. Mobile is kind of what it is. So you, the scripts that you're going to use are not going to initiate on the mobile application. So you do want to make sure that whatever form you're pushing out and people are using are going to be front and center that they can work with. Let's show you what we mean around that visibility situation. So first and foremost, if I come in and I'm on the loan application form and I go ahead and I have a specific item that I want to hide from the phone application, when I go into the properties, I will see an option under here for the options under availability for display for available on phone. If I uncheck that, that will then prevent this from actually being displayed on the phone application. And then it won't count towards my limit. It'll still show up on tablet, but it won't necessarily show up on phone. The other customization option that you want to kind of keep in mind is around iframes and web resources. So if I open this up, Remember that iframes and web resources do have the ability to be used on the mobile application, but you have to decide whether or not you want to use it. So in this case, I have this iframe that's displaying this Bing map control. By default, it's not going to show up on the tablet unless I enable it. Now, in order to do that, I would really just check this option here, and then that would allow this to be presented onto the tablet application. So these are just a couple of little subtle things that depending upon how you want to transfer that over into the mobile app that you want to kind of keep in mind. Now, the other thing we talked a little bit about was the ability to preview those forms. So once you've built your form and you want to see what it's going to look like on the mobile application and you've enabled it for mobile, now I can come up here and I will have a mobile option that I can use from a preview perspective. And this will give me the capabilities to preview it on a tablet or a phone. Now, these are just generic screen resolutions. It's not necessarily targeted at a specific device, but it at least gives you the idea to see you know what it would potentially look like inside the application. So when I decide that I want to preview it and I click on preview, now it's going to show you what this entity looks like in here. So it shows you some of the individual items that I can see from my mobility standpoint. I can see some of my different items that I would work with from here, my sample data that I would be looking at. I would now be able to click on each one of those options and I could see what it looks like from a swiping perspective. So here's how things are going to be presented into that mobile application. 
So this gives me the ability to preview that and kind of work through it. Now, as we mentioned kind of in a previous module, the big thing to remember here is this is using sample data. It's all read-only data. I can't necessarily modify it, but I at least have to have a few different records in there so it understands how we're going to transfer over into the new mobile version of the application. But these are just a few of the things from a form design principle that you want to keep in mind when you start customizing for the, mob for the mobility story. Another consideration you want to look at when talking about, you know, customizing for mobile is views. So for the most part, things are going to transfer over pretty, pretty standard to what you would be looking at. There are a couple of little subtle differences that you want to keep in mind. The tablet application is actually going to get the full view of, and the full capabilities to see all the items within the application itself. So when you have a view like My Active Accounts, you're going to see all of that inside the tablet application. Phone actually has a minimal version of that view where it really only shows you the first four columns in that particular view. So one of the things that you have to kind of keep in mind is being that I'm working with kind of a four column limitation on the phone app, should I go in and move certain fields around to make sure that things are going to display? Now the other thing to that is the entity image. When you create an entity, you can associate an entity image with that entity. That entity image automatically kind of becomes the first column inside the, the, the mobile application when you're viewing it on phone. So that entity image is already going to eat up one of your four columns. So sometimes depending upon what the entity is, maybe you remove the image from that particular perspective to free up another column, or at the very least you may need to reorganize things around just to make sure that whatever fields are critical to be seen from a phone perspective are actually transferring over and being visibly seen on the phone app when you're working through it. Another consideration that you want to think about is dashboards. So we talked about you know, creating dashboards and having dashboards be accessible to people throughout the application. Dashboards do have a mobile story as well. All dashboards, whether they're system or personal dashboards, do have the capabilities to be enabled for mobile when you're working with it. The other thing is, just like when we're working with it from an application standpoint, when we create dashboards, if those dashboards have security roles associated with them, on the mobile environment, the users are only going to see the dashboards that they have access to based upon their security roles. Now, what you do need to do is, if you want a dashboard to be available on mobile, you do actually have to enable that at a dashboard level. So when you're customizing the dashboard, you can actually go up into Properties, and when you click on Properties, you'll see underneath the Dashboard Properties, you'll see an option there that says Enable for Mobile. Once you check that, that'll then allow that dashboard to be available on the mobile application. And again, as I mentioned, if you have users who like to create their own personal dashboards because they want to organize stuff out, those personal dashboards can also be enabled for mobile. Once they're enabled for mobile, now they can go ahead and use them. They can set default dashboards, switch between them. That's not a problem, but you do have to make sure that the dashboard has at least been enabled for mobile in order for them to use it. The final piece to the mobile story is how people interact with their mobile devices. Obviously, if you're using a tablet or if you're using a phone, a lot of times you're using your thumb or you're using your finger to be able to, you know, click on specific fields and navigate through the application. And that's real prevalent when you start talking about the phone application. Well, we talked a little bit about like the editable grids and how they use the, the mobile controls to facilitate that. That's another consideration that you want to look at when you're designing these elements is if this is going to be displayed on a, on a phone, would it make more sense instead of having a text field or a drop down box for contact rating to actually have it be replaced with a series of stars? And so now all they have to do is using their thumb, they can basically push the star rating that they want and it will display that on the form. So when you start talking about presenting information on the mobile application and, and in, the, in the phone application, these mobile controls allow you to have a much more tailored experience based upon the device that they're working with. And there's things like sliders for, you know, dollar amount type situations, calendars, multimedia type scenarios. So look at what the element is that you're working with and then when you go into that field, you can open up the properties of that field and go to controls and you can add different controls and then define whether or not that control is going to be accessible on the mobile application or on the phone or on the tablet depending upon what specific use case that you have, but it really makes from a usability perspective things much, much easier as people are moving forward. 
as we mentioned at the top of the module, the mobility piece is definitely something you want to think about. How, you know, do you have users who are going to be using the tablet application? Do you have users that are going to be going out and using the phone application? The customizations, the whole deploy once, or you know, build once, deploy everywhere mantra is definitely at the forefront of this. But if you take some time and understand the subtle nuances on what's going to happen, it's just going to make it much, much easier. So when you take into consideration, you know, the form limitations in regards to the 75 fields and 10 lists or five tabs, um, that's going to be a critical element to how you position that information on that form. So when it transfers over into the mobile experience, it's going to be displayed correctly. Probably the biggest thing to remember here is, you know, if you have things like uh, iframes and web resources and things that need to be displayed on the mobile application, those are not going to do so by default. You have to go in and enable them. So what we really want to take time to understand is if you take a step back and you look at kind of the overall picture and where mobile sits in that grand scheme of that picture, if you spend a little bit of time thinking about it ahead of time, that can save you a ton of work down the road. For the most part, your customizations will transfer over beautifully. It's just a matter of making sure with those specific use cases that you're looking at that you've taken the time to understand how they're going to transfer over and everything should work across just fine. So that's going to be our look into how to customize a Dynamics 365 environment. And I think the big thing that we really wanted to get across of this course is all the different moving pieces and elements that will make up a successful implementation. None of the concepts that we talked about in here are overly difficult. It's just understanding how they're going to work together in the big picture of things to not only make sure that your users have the best possible experience, but also to make sure that from a deployment scenario, we're deploying everything across across all form factors much, much easier as you're moving forward. So I want to take just a quick look and just review some of the key concepts that we talked about over the course of this course. We first just wanted to give you an overall introduction to how do you customize Dynamics 365. So we talked about the customization principles. We talked about the different deployment mechanisms that you would use for deploying those customizations and just how they're all going to fit together from a big picture standpoint. We also went in and looked at solutions and solutions are really going to be critical to successful implementations of your customizations as you're moving forward. That's what's going to allow you to build those customizations maybe in a demo environment or in a, you know, a testing environment and now transfer them very successfully from demo to UAT to production and so on and so forth. And the biggest thing there is that's what's going to keep all of those customizations that are kind of related to each other together into one nice package as you're moving forward. We explored how you customize entities and fields. We talked about how to create new entities in the application and how to define some of the different properties around entities as opposed to if you want to use it for mobility, if you want to use document management, if you want to be able to use the like, interactive service hub customization customizations inside of that, how you would work through that. And we looked at how to create different fields, whether they're date fields or text fields, or even into some of the more complex fields, such as calculated fields and roll-up fields, and how you can use field security to better control who can do what to specific items on a entity itself, regardless of how they're accessing that information. We looked at the role of how entity relationships play into a Dynamics 365 customization area. We showed you how you can use one-to-many relationships to facilitate lookup functionality in the application, or if you need more advanced functionality where you have multiple entities that need to be linked together, how you can use many-to-many -many relationships to facilitate that. And we talked about the concept of hierarchical relationships. So if you want to display hierarchy information inside the application, how that hierarchical functionality will let you do that. And then we obviously looked and spent a fair amount of time talking about actual form customizations. How are the forms laid? out? How do you position the tabs and the sections and the fields on the forms? And what are some of the specialized components, whether they're iframes or web resources or subgrids, to be able to expose additional functionality? Maybe adding a subgrid onto a form that allows you to see all the contacts that are associated with that specific form. So when you're working with it, you now have the ability to interact with those contacts using some of the editable grid functionality. We looked at the view concept and how to customize views in the application and make sure that not only do you have your views appropriate for what it is that you're trying to accomplish, but you also have any charts and dashboards that are going to need to be packaged in as part of that set up into the actual 
customization package that you're working through. We looked at the role that business rules play and we explored the new business rule designer inside Dynamics 365. So if you need to really provide users with that real-time client feedback, how you can go ahead and, and position those business rules to toggle the, toggle the requirement level on specific fields or maybe even toggle the visibility on specific fields. And then we looked at more targeted circumstances where maybe you are going to be looking at deploying interactive services hub as part of your organization and what are the specific customization capabilities and methodology around interactive service hub and some of those different items that you need to take into consideration if you're going to be deploying that as well as the mobility story how do you ensure that all of these customizations that you've created on these forms are going to very successfully transfer over into that mobile story. And so we looked at how all of those different individual pieces can set in, come together as kind of one finalized solution. Now with that being said, the other couple of things that I wanna to bring to your attention is inside the course module, there will be hands-on companion labs that you can use. And we've really designed these to allow you to go out and get some hand-on experience based upon all the different examples that we've given you. So you'll have an opportunity to create and package a solution, create some entities and define some relationships around those entities, and then package all of that information together using views and forms. And so you have all of that information at your disposal. And I would highly recommend that if you have the opportunity to download those companion labs and use those because they will definitely help you as you're moving forward. So that's going to do it for our course today. Again, my name has been Derek, and I just want to say thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all the best as you move forward. So take care, everybody, and have a good one.